Hello and welcome to today's video. I am a bit sick and I'm going to talk about that today. You can probably hear it in my voice. If I have to cough a little bit, if I, I'm going to try and mute my microphone, but bear with me. Um, I think it's still really important to highlight just how important it is to be able to get sick through your healing process. And the best time to do it is when I'm sick. So you're going to have to deal with my slightly croaky voice. So getting sick is actually a really important part of healing from a chronic, chronic disease or a chronic health problem. Especially if, through your illness, you've experienced immune dysfunction of some some form. This could look like histamine intolerance. This could look like mast cell activation syndrome. This could look like any type of autoimmune disease. This can look like a whole different array of different things. This could be as simple as just having a very low immune response. As in, everyone around you gets sick and you don't really seem to get sick. But then maybe some of your like weird chronic disease symptoms flare up. You know, for me, this would be like some liver pain. You know, everyone around me is getting sniffly and cold and my liver hurts. And then I'm like depressed and tired. And it's like, this is, this is weird. Why am I sick differently to everyone else? This is, this is immune dysfunction. So every time I get sick now, I celebrate, I get really happy, at least for the first few days, you know, I'm on like day four now. I'm getting kind of bored of it. I can, my throat is going and... I'm I'm bored I'm I'm bored of being sick. I'm I'm tired. I'm all phlegmy. I'm snotty. I don't like it. <clears throat> but at the same time, I love it. Because people would get sick around me and nothing would happen to me. I would just get tired, get depressed, and have liver pain. No immune response, no mucus, no phlegm, nothing. And this is this is essential. You you have lymphatic fluid, you have mucus because this is how your body heals itself it uses these mechanisms to 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 heal itself and if your body can't trigger an appropriate immune re immune response you you cannot be healthy it's not possible if you look at the healthiest people these people when they get sick they get sick you know we're talking like bedridden for a couple of days massive headache um maybe like even like a raging fever no appetite they're, and they're just like laying in bed sweating and two or three days later they're just like top of the world like they feel amazing they feel even better than they did before <clears throat> so your immune system you can determine the health of your immune system by your immune response and the best way to measure that is when you get sick what's really what's what i really want to emphasize here is there's there's two main there's two main reasons why getting sick like getting acutely sick, like getting a cold, getting a flu, getting a virus is really, really important if you're trying to heal from a chronic health problem. The first is anytime you're exposed to a bacteria or a virus, a fungus, anything that's like potentially pathogenic, if everyone around you gets sick and you don't, that doesn't mean like you, you missed it. It doesn't mean like it skipped past you. It means it got into your body and your body didn't do anything about it. And it's living inside of you still. So that virus is continuing to basically drain your your life force energy that bacteria moves into your gut that those whatever it is it moves in and then you have a new resident and you have something new that is basically stealing from you on the inside and your immune system is like eh, we can't do anything about it so we'll just we'll just we'll just do nothing we'll just leave it when you get sick when you're getting mucusy when you have a fever when you this is your body activating your immune system you know i can i can feel right now this is a little bit exerting for me I'm getting like hot flushes. I can feel my body is is doing things. I've, I have an aura ring, so I can see my 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 body temperature. Over the last four days, my body temperature has been like a degree higher than it normally is, which is crazy. You know, as your immune as your as your temperature increases, the activity of your immune system increases like exponentially. We're talking like if you're looking in Fahrenheit, every every degree it doubles. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine how much my, my immune system is in, increasing like this? And this is really important. For one, I'm not going to add to my chronic viral burden. I'm not going to just take a new pathogen, bring it into my body and say like, oh, welcome to the family, you know, come and join me. Like, help me have chronic fatigue syndrome. Lower my energy. Give me more food sensitivities. Mess up my detox pathways, you know. Welcome aboard. My body's actually like, no, we don't want you here. Get, 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 get out of here. So the body is responding, which means you're not adding to the to the burden that your body already has. But what's even more important, maybe not even more important, maybe just as important, but this is a really cool thing and not a lot of people know this, is 
every time you uh, you have an acute immune response, so you're fighting a virus or something, your body uses this as an opportunity to do loads of deep work. Like it's clearing heavy metals, it's going through your gut and systematically removing different things. The amount of mucus that I'm producing right now on the back of my nose, in my throat, going into my gut, completely changing the composition of my microbiome. It must be completely different. You know, you're going to, the mucus is going to feed organisms like, like acomensia. There's a really good likelihood if you have low acomensia, you also have immune dysfunction. You're not producing mucus. You don't have that, that organism. That organism is essential for you to be healthy. It's one of those like core keystone, like microbiome foundation organisms. And it's directly connected with what I'm talking about here. So this is changing my microbiome composition during while I'm sick but also afterwards there will be a lasting impact your body will also deep clean so many things my immune system still isn't the strongest yet I'm sure you can hear in my voice that it's there's something going on this could not have happened five years ago I could simply could not get this ill but my body still struggles with mounting like a super strong immune response we're talking like a, like a, a fever is pretty much the maximum level of immune reaction that you can have if you take a fever, and often when you have a fever, you have no appetite. And this is because your body is like, why are you giving me food? Like, I'm busy. Like, leave me alone. I'm figuring this, this thing out. So your body is, your body is really, really focused. The amount of detox that you will do, the amount of, of like deep healing that your body will achieve if you are combining having a fever and not having appetite and then fasting, it's like... Each day of that is worth 10 days of normal fasting. Because when you, when you just do a regular fast, you're kind of imposing it onto your body. And that's not a bad thing if you know how to do it right. You know how to listen to your signals. Your body's like, okay, we can go along with this. If you're having a fever and you actively have no appetite, you respect that. And your body is doing this deep cleaning during a fasting. You will heal so deeply, so profoundly. Even even two days of fasting with a fever, you're you're gonna you're gonna change your whole life. The thing is, most people can't do that anymore. They don't have they can't generate a fever. It's not possible. The immune system just isn't strong enough. It's shot. Especially if you're looking at histamine intolerance, mast cell activation syndrome, heavy metal toxicity. These all think these are all things that suppress the immune function. So the fact I'm having this immune response, I'm overjoyed. Yeah, it does kind of suck. Something that's also really important to note, I'll get to your question in just a second, Frank. Something that's also really important to note is when your body is going through one of these acute phases of, of healing, you might notice that you, you're you getting this kind of feeling like healing healing is non-linear. You know, right now, I have more food sensitivities than I've had for at least a year, maybe even longer. My energy is is very low. I don't feel very creative. I don't feel very enthusiastic. And this is normal. Your body is reallocating all of those resources, all of those like levels of layers of healing that you've achieved. It's taking all of that and now it's like throwing it into this like acute healing process. What very often happens if you have a chronic disease and then you're working on, and then you're having an acute response afterwards, you will feel so much better. Not just better from the acute illness that you're experiencing, but from even from before that, you know, the these acute healing episodes, like having a cold, a virus, a flu, a fever, these are like, these are going to be the, these are like plateau breakers. You know, a lot of the time when we're healing a chronic disease, it's like, it's, it feels like this, and then maybe it's like this, and then maybe it's like this. You know, it feels like we go through phases where we're on this like very flat trajectory. It's very likely after you have a cold or something like this, you're going along, you have a cold, and you go down, and you're like down here. And then afterwards, you rock it up to a new, a new level, a new, a new, a new normal. It's amazing. So, so important. It's a really, there's a really good metric to measure as far as are you healing and how well are you doing? How strong is your immune response? And it's not just about like, oh, my immune response is better than yours. You know, don't compare yourself to other people. It doesn't help. Don't compare yourself to me. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday. What was your immune system like last month? What was it like three months ago? What was it like six months ago? What was it like a year ago? Because I couldn't have even had an immune response like this a year ago. And my immune system was building up. I cannot wait till I have my first fever. I cannot wait for the next 3, 6, 9, 12 months to see what my immune system does. It's going to be amazing. So, Frank, 
Nice to see you, Frank. He has a question. Does your heart rate variability, as measured by your aura ring, look different when you are sick than when you have a histamine response? Yes, it is. So I don't really have histamine responses anymore. So this doesn't, well, it doesn't specifically apply to me. But in general, what you would be looking for, an acute histamine response, you would be seeing a very acute drop, probably in, in primarily just heart rate variability. Because histamine being a neurotransmitter, that goes out of balance. It throws a lot of other things off, you, off of balance in your body. That causes stress. And heart rate variability is your body's ability to adapt to stress. It shows how well it's adapting with it. So if you have a, a histamine response, you're going to, the, the primary thing you'd be looking for would be your average HRV at night to, to, to drop. When you get sick, you will see that drop. You, the, the drop will probably be more significant. The, these acute illness, you'd probably see like a big, like we're talking maybe like 10, 20, maybe even 25 points drop in heart rate variability, depending on where yours is. So my, my average heart rate variability is normally in the, the lower 80s range, which is amazing, which is very good. I'm very happy with that. I'm very proud of, very proud achievement. When I first started getting sick, my heart rate variability dropped down to 60 from 80, with massive, massive decrease. I was having an acute, acute situation, you know, a histamine thing, maybe a bit of a food intolerance episode, maybe, maybe an injury, you know, maybe you sprain your ankle or something like that. You'd probably be looking for like a maybe five to seven point reduction, maybe a little bit more depending on how sensitive you are. Definitely not as much as 20. 20 is like a really acute thing. You know, you'd be talking like very, very, very big thing happening in your body. When you are sick, another thing you'll also notice is you will see changes in your uh, your body temperature. That'll be one of the, the bigger indicators. And usually what you'll see is the body temperature will increase. Um, you also have to play this with symptoms as well, you know. Most people have a histamine response. They have like a characteristic set. It was very interesting for me being sick, and I'm going to have to wrap this up soon because my voice is going to disappear. It's very interesting with me being sick. I haven't really had my mm, histamine reaction in a long time. And when I was getting sick, it was really funny because I was sneezing a lot and I could feel like this tingling feeling in my nose. And I was like, I know what this is. This is a histamine feeling. And it made me feel really excited, actually, because instead of having like a an uncalibrated histamine response where my body was responding with a mast cell activation or a histamine notorious response to things that it didn't need to, I was experiencing the same symptoms that I would have, but it was for a good reason. It was like, we're fighting something, we're clearing a virus, we're clearing an infection. And it felt fascinating. It was like, wow, I know what this feeling is. I can feel these histamines like bub <laughs> bubbling and itching in my nose. And it's really, really cool. So yeah. Healing takes time. Healing is going to take, uh, it's a process. When people say healing is non-linear, this is what it actually means. You know, I hear healing is non-linear a lot. And I think what, I think some people say it to be like, um, to take the pressure off of, a li off of you a little bit, because you do have to be patient. And if you just put a, a stack of pressure on you, it's not really going to help you heal. It's just going to stress you out. Excuse me. <laughs> but, what healing is non-linear looks like is like I've been completely free of food sensitivities and now I'm having some food sensitivities that doesn't actually necessarily mean I'm doing anything wrong it just means my body's going through a process and it's saying mm, right now our ability to digest these foods is slightly less important than doing this other thing. and I the only way you can really know is when you build a relationship with yourself when you build a relationship with your body and you build a relationship with the process and there's a lot of trust that that's involved in it and there's a lot of, it's scary sometimes, you won't always know, and it's kind of just like living in that state of uncertainty and, and understanding that ultimately your body is intelligent, it's doing the best that it can, and you are, you are being guided through this, through, through this process. You can say you, you're being guided by God, you can say you're being guided by nature, because nature has its own natural healing energy, you can say you're being guided by people like me, or by people that you find interesting on the internet all of all everything is collaborating to guide you like to just keep pushing you towards that that correct direction that is that is right for you you're being very gently guided however you see that so just like trust in that even when you're having peaks even when you're having troughs like it's non-linear and you'll get that but 
something that's really nice to measure as far as your healing progress is. What is your immune system doing when you get acutely ill? Can you get acutely ill? Can you have a fever? And how are you able to handle that? You know, I think in, in certain cases, people might jump for meds or like jump on, like trying to suppress the fever or, and you like, obviously with meds, talk to a doctor, I'm not a doctor, I'm like yada yada, you know, but building that trust back up in your body is, is the foundation is this. That is what healing basically is. It's rebuilding a relationship with yourself and with your body and trusting the process and just being patient with that and being, being gentle and being soft and being kind. And if you need help or if you need some support or if you need someone just to tell you to look from a, take a step back and look at things in a grand scheme, you know, find somebody, ask for help, get that help because it can be really, really helpful. You know, it's when you're really struggling, when you're in the, the depths of, of, the, of a healing process and you're going through one of those troughs, can feel really really hard and sometimes you need someone that can see the big picture so don't do it alone you're not you're not you're not alone you're not by yourself if you need anything from me please let me know if you have any questions also please let me know i'm going to go because i still have consultation to do today and i need to be able to speak to do that so i'm going to save the small portion of my voice that i have left for, for that consultation so take care i'll see you soon bye bye strong immune systems cheers <laughs>